he became the best basketball player on the planet. Most know him for what he's doing today. The two-time MVP Nikola Jokic headed to the NBA Finals with a great chance to win a title, but most know little about him off the court. We get these little nuggets of information, no pun intended. They give us some insight, but also just more questions. His off-seasons are spent on whatever this is, riding behind a horse. We get these photos of a young, more out-of-shape Jokic that just get you thinking about how he became the player we see today. We have these brothers that from the outside looking in are polar opposites to Jokic. I mean, just look at them. They're on the sideline trying to fight Suns players. Man, his brothers are like mobsters, bro. Like they, <laughs> they're so different than him. Like he got some, but they're like, they're, they really, like they'll come out on the court and try to fight like almost every other game. And they're like, they're so different than Joker, but they, they take care of him. I wouldn't be messing with these guys. This is one of his brothers. He was drafted in a Taco Bell commercial while he was asleep. It was his brother in New York that called him popping bottles to be greeted by a grumpy younger brother on the other end of the phone. He had been selected with the 41st pick in the second round. So the question is, did scouts miss something? And the answer is absolutely not. Jokic's draft story is not one of Adam Sandler fighting this kid that no one had ever heard of. Every front office got the chance to see Jokic with their very own two eyes and actually on multiple occasions. He signed with a professional team overseas when he was 16. How long had he been playing? Oh, for real, for real, I started last, like, last year, you know, but I play in my hometown, Sombor. I play basketball, I have to practice one of one of week, uh, one of day, you know, and that's just one, one half hour, you know, so something like that. Whatever he said there. But then he got a chance to play with the Serbian U19 team in the 2013 World Cup. This is where he would start to catch some attention. He averaged just seven points, but most front offices at least knew the name with the six foot 10 big hitting two threes against the US to close the tournament. Back with his professional club the following season, he would go up to 11 points, six rebounds and three assists. He had done just enough to secure a spot at the Nike Hoop Summit, a collection of workouts, scrimmages and games between the top prospects in the US versus the world. He would be playing against future top picks like Jaleel Okafor, Justice Winslow, and Miles Turner. He'd be playing with future top picks like Carl Anthony Towns, Emmanuel Moutier, and Jamal Murray. Despite making just one shot in the actual game, throughout the play prior, he had been easily the most productive player over the last two days thanks to his shooting ability and footwork in the post. But despite all that, NBA scouts weren't impressed, and this was just two months before the draft. Jokic summed up the most prominent sentiment pretty well during an interview at that hoop summit. He was asked if he ever had interest in college basketball. This is what he said. Like, you know, in college basketball, it's so fast, it's so, uh, everybody jumps so high. I don't jump, you know, right. I just play basketball, like, you know, one on one, two on two, something like that. I don't jump, I don't jump high, I don't run fast, so. The player that couldn't even do a push-up when he signed a professional contract less than two years ago had no fear giving it to us straight. I don't jump high, I don't run fast. Now this wasn't news to any scouts, they were seeing it with their own two eyes. His own coach from the summit said, if anybody in the gym predicted that he would become what he is now, I would be shocked. I saw that he could become a good NBA player in time, but even that was debatable at that point in time. NBA Draft.net would say, unfortunately, his physical limitations, namely lack of quickness and foot speed, severely limit his chances to make it to the NBA. He's a solid mid-level European prospect due to his size and shooting ability. He could be a poor man's Boris Diaw. He will probably be the fourth or fifth scoring option whenever he's in the game. However, there's no shame in being a respectable reserve on a winning team in the future. That's from Bleacher Report. No matter how impressive he was on the court, NBA scouts we're just not willing to overlook his physical flaws, and rightfully so. Few have been able to overcome them. It's not like he was a sure thing. He wasn't a great athlete. He wasn't a great shooter. This was luck. That's from Tim Connolly, the man that drafted Nikola Jokic. When the Nuggets selected him, it was purely out of FOMO, a guy who might be a breakout guy. We thought about past drafts of teams that missed on guys like him, like Marc Gasol, wasn't exactly Adonis when he was selected in the second round and turned into a great player. The luck would go even further. Out of pure coincidence, the Nuggets had recently brought on a scout focused on European talent. Up until this point, he was just an unpaid intern with the Utah Jazz. It just so happened that he had gotten to see a little bit more from Jokic, see his development. 
He wasn't singing his praises. He wasn't even necessarily advocating for the selection of Jokic. But it really just took him being a more familiar face for the Nuggets to get that feeling of missing out, creeping up more and more to the point that they selected him. Now, knowing what he's become today, it's easy to look back at that Hoop Summit highlight reel and see the blatant talent on display. But every single one of our eyes would have been clouded by the blatant concerns. If the same story happened again, the same outcome would happen. Scouts didn't miss something. The only intrigue, even for the Nuggets, was taking a shot in the dark on a guy that one day might be an okay backup. There is and will only ever be one Nikola Jokic. His game is nearly impossible to replicate, and most of that stems from his unique personality. You have someone that just doesn't seem to care that much. He's sleeping while getting drafted, something that's the pinnacle of most players' life up until that point. He says things like this all the time. Nah, you know, <laughs> that cannot help you. But the, the thing that, I mean, I knew that even before that the basketball is not the main thing in my life and probably never gonna be. But when out there, despite being one of the biggest players on the court, despite appearing to be out of shape compared to those around him, he's playing over 40 minutes in the playoffs, playing at 100 every single second. He's running end to end. He's popping right back up off the ground, all while being the best player on the court. That doesn't look like someone that doesn't care, but it's in a different way than most. A lot of guys eat, sleep, and breathe basketball. It's something that's very serious to them. Jokic looks at it no more than the creator James Naismith did. Just a game. It doesn't mean he doesn't want to win. In fact, it's all he wants to do. There's no ego. There's no alternative motivation. Every single second, he's just trying to do what gives them the best chance to win. A lot buy into this mentality at this point in the year. The difference is that it was never a mentality change for Jokic. Since we've seen him with a basketball, it's been a constant. That's what created the best passing big, not just that, one of the best passers we've ever seen. He didn't become a great passer for the value that it brought to him as a player. He became a great passer because when the best option was to pass, he did. Treating it as just a game and nothing more is why he's been able to experiment, why he's unfazed, why he's able to craft these no-look, needle-threading passes. We praise this fearless work ethic mentality. The best example would be Kobe Bryant's Mamba mentality. And rightfully so, we've seen the success that can have. But it's interesting that nearly an opposite mentality can be just as effective. But that's hard to grasp from a prospect. It's hard to grasp whether that translates to playing carefree and unfazed, or if that translates to just a non-existent work ethic and just disinterest in the game completely. We couldn't answer that for Jokic leading up to the draft. And it was a question most didn't even feel worth answering for a player that already had so many physical limitations to overcome. We also can't overlook the situation Jokic went to. The scout that raised attention to Jokic, he's still on the team. The GM that drafted him, Tim Connolly, he was on the team till he got a bag to go to Minnesota a year ago. And his coach during his very first game, Mike Malone, is still the man coaching him right now. The Nuggets gave Jokic a starting role just a couple months into his rookie season. No new personnel came in with a different perception of his value. Year in and year out, confidence was instilled. The team quickly adjusted to running the offense through him, allowing his development to become a rocket ship. There are very few other organizations that you can justify would have produced a similar outcome. He is the Joker, a mysterious man with a unique approach no one could have predicted or even see coming.